What happened? I zoomed in. How does the hair look? Looks really good. You didn't even look at it? I've been looking at this whole time. Looks awesome. How's your coffee? Is it warm enough? It's lukewarm. May I heat it up for you? The talent. Yeah. Look at me. Your hair looks fantastic. And you don't have double chins. Now. Now you do. Now. Now it's just one big chin. <laughs> Huh? It's hot. Oh, that is hot. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Brittany and I am a Messy Bun teacher. We are gonna be doing a video today all about novels and novel studies and I am so pumped about because a few of you asked some questions on how I do novel studies and I was like, yes, I can finally do a video on that. So grab a hot cup of coffee or an iced coffee and get a blanket and cuddle up and let's talk about books. I did have a couple of you ask um, how I do novel studies in my classroom. I teach fifth grade reading in Middle Tennessee, if you don't know. I teach in a middle school, which is kind of odd for fifth grade to be in middle school. I came from an intermediate school back in Oklahoma, which was fifth and sixth grade. And here in our county, fifth grade is within middle school. So it's fifth through eighth grade. And so within middle school, we do novel studies. I also have a textbook that I follow as well. I think it's important to do novel studies um, for the kids because although, you know, our textbook, I love, you know, the curriculum that it has, there's really good fruit that comes from it. I think that a novel study can really get kids um, to fall in love with books and also how to dissect a text and how to really read a novel because I feel like for a lot of the, the kids, they don't have that stamina anymore to sit down and read a book. And so I really want to enrich that. Some of you asked on what novels I choose for my novel studies. How do I organize them? How do I get the kids engaged? And so I'm going to tackle those questions today. I'm gonna to round it out to about five things that you need to have a successful novel study, not just a read aloud, which don't get me wrong, Read alouds are very important in today's classroom. Whether you're reading from a novel or whether you're reading from a picture book or an article, I think it's very important for kids to just sit and listen to an adult reading to them. But when it's a novel study, I want them to analyze the text, dig deeper into it, compare it with another text, ask questions, do a project with it. That way we're teaching them on how to appropriately appropriately read a certain text. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is organization. Now, I took some of my organization from the different novel studies that I have, and I'm gonna do a list right here of all the novels that I have done in the years past. I have done this for six years now, and some of my favorite have been The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which I'm gonna mainly talk about today, Restart by Gordon Corman, and then Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins. And those have been so fun, really enriching, rich text, some you know elements that the kids really enjoy. And so I'm gonna really focus on The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe because this is the novel that we are going to be reading in January of this year. Um, and it's going to be such a good text. This is actually my favorite, favorite book of all time. I read it as a kid and I continue to read it as an adult and I get more and more things out of it every year that I read it. So that is what we're gonna focus on right now is organization. There's two things that I think you need to have. One of them is a student notebook, whether it is a physical notebook that they have and they keep their notes, they keep their graphic organizers, you know, different things that they're writing down as they're reading the text or whether it's a digital one. Now I have found a digital one that I am going to supplement with some of my own things and I am going to link that below. The reason why I'm doing digital, as of now we are going to be remote. And so I want to do something digital just in case if we do go back in person and then we pivot to remote, I want to have it digitalized so I don't have to, you know, get all of these resources out to the kids and they don't have anything with them. I would prefer a physical notebook, but this year is a little different. So I think there's gonna be some pros and cons. With our digital notebook that we're going to use this year, I purchased on TPT by the Owl Spot and I searched and searched for hours. There were some really good ones, but not quite 
the skills and standards that I'm going to be teaching within this novel. And so I found this one and it was spot on. I needed some of the skills and standards that it, I um, am going to be teaching and then I'm going to supplement with some of the things that I've done before with this novel. What I feel like your students need is either a folder that have the prongs or a digital notebook that you can find on TPT or you make in Google Slides or PowerPoint and you push it out to them because this is gonna be one location where they can take notes, where they write their summaries, where they write their predictions, where they have an ongoing journal um, while they're reading the text because when they stop to think about what they've read or answer a question or even a question that's a personal connection, that is helping them connect to the book even more. And so when you have one location for that, that's gonna be not only helpful for you to when you go back and grade those different pieces of the notebook, but it's gonna be really helpful for the students. And so I'm actually excited to do a digital notebook and I'm gonna show you right here. Um, I actually traded out the um, cover page that they had. It was kind of a little bit more elementary than I would like since I do teach fifth grade. I kind of tell them um, when we come back from winter break, I start treating them like sixth graders because they're halfway there. And so I put in a picture of the movie poster. I thought that was really cool. And then I just titled it with Narnia Journal, written by, and they're gonna type in their name. And then I always, always start with a prediction. A lot of the kids have seen the movie, but they've never read the book. And so we're going to hopefully separate those two and we are gonna finish the novel study with re watching the movie so they can compare and contrast both. I happen to love the movie as well, but we always look at the cover, we examine it, and then we do a prediction. Prediction is such a good skill and strategy for kids as they are reading because it kind of gets their brain in that mode and it starts the wheels turning as they begin to read this really cool story. So I created this page and honestly, it was really easy. I just opened it up, clicked add page, and then I add some text boxes. And so based on the illustrations, and there's some illustrations within the book, uh, based on the front cover, based on the little synopsis in the back, and really separating it, even if you've seen the movie, put that aside, and I want you to write a prediction on what you think is going to happen. And so I always include that in the beginning of their notebook. And it's always fun because when we finish the novel, they go back to the prediction and see if it matches up to what really happened in the story. And so I, what really drew me is we're gonna be talking about biographies up until we read this book. And so um, I always love to engage the students with, especially if it's a historical fiction. Now I know Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe starts out as historical fiction because it talks about the Blitz um, and the Blitz in uh, London during World War II. But then it turns fantasy, if you've ever read the story. Um, so it's definitely a mix of two. And so if I am teaching a, a historical fiction book, I wanna give context. And so we talk about the Blitz, we talk about the author, giving those perspectives and that context and background before you even read the book is so important because A, it engages the kids even more. It gives really good background and helps with the schema and really connects some dots for the kids. So it even helps them understand the story even more. And so this notebook, which I loved, really helped them research and uh, learn about C.S. Lewis, which if you know anything about me, C.S. Lewis is like my hero. I want to go to Ireland one day and see his childhood home. I want to go to the bench that him and Tolkien, you know, sat and talked about the Lord of the Rings. I'm a nerd. I don't even care. I want to do that. So this, um, before we even read, we make a prediction and we learn about the author and we learn about the context. So we're going to talk about, um, you know, who is C.S. Lewis? What was his childhood like? What made him write this story? Um, what was the Blitz? You know, and I was gonna show pictures of the Blitz. Normally, um, I take a whole day and we kind of travel back into the time of uh, London in the 1940s. And so I have pictures everywhere. I have music. Um, I kind of dress up in that time period, but this year's a little different. So we're gonna still kind of do, do that, but in a shortened version. And so I loved that this um, author, um, the Owl Spot, included not only just information, but they have to go out and research. 
Um, so it says right here that they have to click on these links and it brings them to different articles about C.S. Lewis. And then they answer these questions, which is so, so cool. And I love, this was so practical that I didn't even think about because every time I push things out through Google Classroom, I get emails like, hey, I deleted the text box. How do I start typing again? Even though I've taught them like 5,000 times, you go to the undo button <clears throat> or you click on the text box, but the, uh, the owl spot, <clears throat> and I don't really know her real name, so I'm just gonna call her the owl spot, uh, put in extra text boxes if they accidentally delete it. So they just click on it and then drag it to wherever, which was genius, very smart, very smart. Uh, and then we kind of di uh, dive into what a fantasy looks like because we've already talked about genres. And so uh, this book is ultimately a fantasy, even though it starts out historical. And so they're gonna really dig deep and they have to do some research as well. Um, and then we're going to dig deep into setting. So student notebook, very important. Aside from that, for you as the teacher, I think one location whether it is a big binder or whether it is a digital file. For me, it is a Google Slides presentation. Not only is that helpful for me, excuse me, not only is that helpful for me to stay organized, but it is visual and the students, I'll show you on my screen, the students see what we're learning today, what exactly uh, we're covering, what objective is the lesson, and it just gives them a visual and it also helps you stay organized and on track. I did this when we taught The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe last year, when we used the Louisiana guidebooks. If you ever used those, those are really good. And so I kind of took bits and pieces of that and kind of made my own thing. But what I really loved is that on the slideshow, not only do you have the objective and the skill that you're gonna learn, because as a teacher, you know, you need to stay focused and what is my objective um, today, but it also gives the students purpose on what they're doing today. So whether you have it on your whiteboard or whatever, on this presentation, it keeps you organized on day-to-day -day what you are teaching. So that has been very helpful. I'll go ahead and show you, I only have a few, um, I have a whole week listed. I'm still building this. Um, it's fun for me, but I am not quite done with the whole novel yet. Uh, so we're going to dig deep into that background and context like I talked about. What is the author? What was the Blitz? Because if we start reading chapter one, it goes right into the Blitz and if they don't know what that is, then they're not gonna know what they're reading. And so we need to talk about that. We need to see pictures. They really need to experience what they went through. We're gonna even look at some of the bomb shelters that they had. Some of them slept in subway stations. They need to know that um, because that really gives background. And then we're gonna go into the next day, which is predictions, which I showed you, and research on C.S. Lewis. Again, don't just dive into the novel. You need to give background and context and really research who wrote this and why did they write that. Not only does that help them connect to the story, but it also teaches them perspective, which is another good standard um, that we learn. Um, so I'm gonna show them a few pictures of his childhood, making a prediction. Um, the next day we're gonna go into finally reading chapter one. I usually read the first chapter to them so they can uh, really get into it and just listen. The other days either we'll listen to the audio version, which I really love because he has a really good um, broad, British accent, or I'll have them read it independently or um, with a partner. And so on chapter one, I'm going to read it to them. And then we're going to talk about the setting because the setting dramatically changes from chapter one to chapter two. And uh, they're going to really take notes. And that's what's important, whether they're at home doing this, um, at, you know, remotely or whether they're in person. Um, I want them to write them on sticky notes or notebook paper. And I know that they can take notes in their notebook, but I also want them to learn how to have a text in front of them and analyze with a paper or a sticky note next to them. And so they are going to write down anything that stands out to them when it comes to the setting of the story in chapter one, whether they notice the season or the year or whether it is the atmosphere, the mood, they're gonna write that down. And then we're gonna translate that into their student notebook. 
Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing for uh, chapter two. Because like I said, in chapter one, it starts in the countryside of England, and then it dramatically changes to Narnia, which don't we all wanna go to Narnia? I wanna go to Narnia, especially after 2020. I have a bun, a bun, I don't have a bun. Not today, Messy Bun doesn't have a bun today. I have a button that says, I wish I was, what was it? I wish I was in Narnia. I think it was that. Oh, I would rather be in Narnia is what my, my button says. Um, so they're going to read chapter two, take notes on the setting, the season, the time, what they notice about the atmosphere, and then they're gonna translate that into their student notebook. In their student notebook, they're going to, and this is what the owl spot provided, and I really loved it. Um, they're gonna type their notes here. So they practiced writing notes on paper and pencil, and then they're gonna translate that onto their focus on setting, um, which is gonna be really good. And that's such a good skill to teach them because so many of us as adults take notes on paper and pencil, and then we have to translate that on a computer. So I think that's a good skill. So honestly, the first thing I think is so important is to be organized. The teacher, you need to have one location, something visible, whether it's a PowerPoint or Google Slides that you can keep track of and the students can see exactly what they're learning. And then two, the students need to keep one location with all their notes, with all of their analyzed things that they're doing with the novel, um, their projects in one location, whether you do that digitally or in person with a physical folder this year. So those are my biggest tips. My other tip, as I turn this off. We should go make out after this. Yeah. So the next thing is that you focus on one objective or skill or standard a day. Now, some of you are like, uh, have you seen our standards? We have to cover a thousand in a whole year. I understand that. And I know for ELA especially, a lot of our standards build on one another. And so when you focus on one or two for that lesson, it gives the students a kind of um, a focus and it really helps them build that skill and standard. And so whenever I have my PowerPoint up, I tell them exactly what we're gonna be focusing on, whether it's setting or character analysis or a theme, whatever it is, they know exactly. And if like an admin came in and they asked, what are you learning today? They would know exactly what it was. We have organized, whether it is a Google Slides or PowerPoint for you as a teacher and a student notebook, and then standard or skill per day. Uh, another thing is um, allow students to vote for the novel. How do I choose my novels? Well, you give the students choices <laughs> instead of just saying, oh, you pick, you give them choices. And so I'm gonna talk about this in a second because I really think having students have that choice on what they wanna read is so important for those reluctant readers, not even just reluctant readers, for readers in general. So I'm gonna put that aside. But for novel studies, I don't just say, hey, this is what we are reading. Now at the beginning of the year, I do because I always start with restart. But for my other two novels that I read, I have a list of novels that are really good leveled, like Lexile level for fifth grade. It challenges them, it's relatable, uh, and it is something that I can pull different texts to uh, align it with. And so that's why I chose The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe because it's such a good higher level book and you can do so many things with it. On the other list, I had Front Desk, which is a really good book as well. It's newer, which I wanna pull in those new, book, new books, not just the older classic books, which are you know very important for reading one. Uh, the Last Kids on Earth, which is a lower level, but I pull in a lot of things and I definitely direct it towards PBL, which I'm hoping to end the year on that because there's a lot of fun things that you can do if you are a PBL foc focused school. Um, I'll maybe do another video on that. And then my other one was Gregor the Overlander, which is one of my other favorites. It is written by Suzanne Collins, who wrote The Hunger Games, and it was actually her first novel se uh, series. I think she has like seven books in that series really good. The kids always enjoy it. It's a little bit longer, um, but it's higher level. You can pull different things from it. So many good things. And so I had that list. And so I pushed that out to the kids. I made a video 
And then I sent them a Google Forms and they all voted and The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe won. And so I pushed that out and sent the Google Forms to the kids and they got to vote for the novel that they wanted to read in January and The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe won. And so I think it's important to give um, voice to the students and, but also give them texts that they haven't read before, that are new, that are higher level, that are relatable, and that you can do a lot of good, rich things with it and not just a good story. Um, and then I believe in the power of choice because when students get to choose what they read on their independent reading time, which even though my classes are shorter this year, I always start my class with independent reading time. And some um, may agree with that, some may not. For me, not only does it set the tone of my class because the first thing they do is grab a book, whether it's in my library or one they chose from our school library and they literally just sit there and I usually have quiet, soft music going and they sit there for five to six minutes reading to themselves independently. That is so important to build that stamina, even if it's five to six minutes a day power of choice. They choose what they want to read and it just sets the tone because it gets everybody calm and relaxed and just instead of just running through the door yelling and you know guys sit down sit down. It's just a really good way to start my class and so I really believe in the power of choice and so having them choose the novel but giving them choices but also independent reading time is so important no matter what age you teach. When we did our readathon this last week uh last week few weeks ago before Christmas break, there are some students that thrived because they read all the time, but then there's some students that just could not sit still and uh, they need that, they crave that. The other thing that I talked about in my novel studies is to bring in different text. And honestly, my admin is the one that inspired this because when I asked him if I could do a certain book, I think it was Gregor, The Overlander, he said, make sure that you um, that you don't just read that text, that you expose these kids to different articles or whether it is different magazine articles or different novel texts altogether. Um, I know when we did read, uh, I think it was Gregor, The Overlander or The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, um, we took in Alice in Wonderland, which is another higher level text. And we didn't read the whole thing. We read a couple chapters and we, it was so good because we were able to compare Alice with Lucy. And then when we read uh, Gregor, we compared it with the Hunger Games and we compared Katniss with Gregor. And not only can you do it with character analysis, but you can do it with setting and you can do it with theme. And so we did it with that. And then there was another poem that we compared the line the witch and the wardrobe with uh there's so many things that you can expose these kids to instead of just the one text when you uh, involve different types of passages and text whether it's poetry written word or spoken word or a different novel or an article a non-fiction piece whatever it is i think that all of those can just really ignite um, and help them connect with the story even more and dig deeper because they need to dig deeper and you need to ask those higher level questions. And that is my next thing that novel studies are so, it is such a good environment for you to have those higher level questions. We always do the DOK questions. And so I need to get better at that. That is something I've always struggled with, with my lessons. And so when I put them strategically in my lessons, and when I talk about lessons, I mean my PowerPoint, my Google Slides that I showed you, I already have them written out, and I ask those DOK threes and those DOK fours, especially when you're doing a PBL or a culminating project that they do throughout the book, you can ask those DOK, depth of knowledge, level four questions, which they need. And so I think when you're doing your novel study, get that out. You can Google search it. There's some online for free. There's some on TPT. Print it out. And when you're making your slides for your daily lessons, figure out the skill and then connect it with some depth of knowledge questions. Because when you do that, or when you come up with the project, the end of the unit project or essay, 
that you can connect it with those higher level questioning. Um, that will help you as a teacher. I know that's going to help me because I don't naturally ask those questions. I usually stay within the one to two do you okay questions. And so I need to push myself as an educator to go beyond that. And so when I already put those in my slides, I don't have any excuse. Like I will be able to ask those questions. And so I think it's really going to help you um, become more natural at that. And I know I need that. And so honestly, those are the only things that I really focus on when I'm doing a novel study. Um, I usually spend about two months on a novel. Some of you might not agree with that, but in I have shorter classes. If I had a longer class time, I think I could spend maybe seven, six to seven weeks on it. I think I want to spend a good amount on it because I'm bringing in different texts, because I'm doing a project, because I'm doing an essay with it, and we're doing lots of things. It's going to take about two months. And so we're going to start this towards the beginning, or not beginning, we're going to start this towards the middle of January, and then we're going to hopefully take it off um, all the way until March, like mid-March is what I'm hoping. And then um, I will keep you updated on the project. I'm still kind of going back and forth because I've done some projects before, but I want it to be more um, involved with the different subjects. And so I'm going to be talking with my team about that because when you involve the different subjects um, and different core teachers, I think that could be an even more impactful project because you're including math and you're including science. And so I will keep you updated on that. Just going back through the list again, make sure you're organized. You have a presentation um, that's a visual, not only for you, but your students, a student, student notebook, whether that is a folder or something digital that I'm doing this year, making sure you give your kids choice on what they wanna read and bringing in those different texts and articles and also those higher level questions. Please comment below if you have any more questions or anything that you do in your novel studies. I would love to know, you know, teaching is beg, borrow, and steal. Um, and so if you have some good ideas and some things that have really worked in your classroom, please put it in the bank of information because we all need a little bit of help right now. If you have any questions on what I do and what we're doing with the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, because we're gonna be starting that soon, let me know below. Thank you guys for watching this video today. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were cozied up with a blanket and enjoying your last few days of winter break because I know my days of winter break are coming to an end. It was good while it lasted. Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. I, I would love for you to join the family. Um, click that notification bell so you can get alerts on the other videos coming out and give it a thumbs up. Life can be messy, but there's always joy to be found. I'll see you in the next video. As an Amazon affiliate and an affiliate of other companies, my videos and content may contain affiliate references and links. If you buy something through one of these links, you don't pay extra, but I will get a small commission. Thank you.